Hello and welcome back to AV Chess Lab as we continue this rapid chess road to 2000 here on chess.com. So let's just get started. All right, so we have white against Havoc 89. So as always, we're going to start with E4, controlling some of the center squares and opening up for our bishop and our queen to move out. So opponent, our opponent goes for E6 and he is opting to play a French defense. Against the French defense, I like to put both my pawns in the center. And this move to 6 is obviously not the best move. Usually they go for d5 right away, but it could it could lead to some kind of transposition in which the pawn is on c6. Now one of the things about the French defense is this uh, light square bishop on c8, which, which usually has a hard time getting out. And already by putting your pawns on c6 and e6, it's going to be even tougher to do. So that's one of the ideas that we're going to continue to follow in this game. But okay, our opponent gives me the opportunity to have three pawns in the center, so we will take it. Now if he goes d5, we're simply going to push pawn to e5, and if he captures here, we're going to capture with our bishop. And again, he's going to have a hard time getting his light square bishop out. And he keeps making poor decisions. So he keeps putting pawns on light squares, and this bishop is just going to stay locked in c8. And honestly, I believe already in move four of the game, I should have a winning advantage. So we're just going to continue now with normal development. Since our opponent is allowing us to have a freely developed and control the center game. Okay, so this move makes a lot of sense. He's developing a piece while attacking our knight on c3 at the same time, trying to ruin our pawn structure. But I'm not going to worry about that too much since in open games, I do prefer the bishops. Now. By moving this bishop out, notice that the square on g7 is no longer protected by a piece. So we can start putting some pressure into, into that square. I'm going to make a move that usually I do not recommend, and it's taking your queen out early. But considering that our opponent made very questionable moves right out of the opening, I think we can get away with this move, since it's going to be really hard for him to create any counterplay against our queen. If knight f6, for example, we simply just take the pawn here. Okay, so he decided to capture on c3 with check, so we have to recapture back. Our pawn structure is a little compromised, but we still have very good control of the center, so I do prefer my position. Still, if he goes for this, we capture, rook to g8, we go queen h6, and then he can choose to capture on e4. So that is a move that he has, and I'm and I'm considering whether taking sh is the best or not. But okay, he goes for queen to f6, very logical. So how should we continue? Notice that in some situations we can push our pawn to e5, better constricting his advancement with the d pawn. But then if we do it right away, he does have queen to g6, which is quite annoying, to tell you the truth. Also, the queen to f6 does a good job of protecting his pawn on g7. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to develop. I'm going to play my bishop to d3. So that then when we play this move, queen to g6 is not possible because we can just take it with our bishop. Okay, so he attacks our, our queen by playing knight to h6. I could choose to remove that knight with my bishop, but it's probably not a good move at the moment. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm just going to move my queen out of the way and preserve the possibility to do that later, especially if we can combine it with a move like e5. So I'm simply going to go here, and on my next move, I'm going to go pawn to e5. This queen is going to have nowhere to go, and after queen takes on g7, for example, we're going to have a winning advantage. Also, queen to g3 has the added idea of going in some situations queen to c7 
But okay, black can simply capture there and I'm not really threatening to take anything. So b5, our opponent chooses to put some pressure on our c4 pawn. Also creating some ideas of bring, trying to bring the bishop out to b7 in some situations. Or even some rook to a7. Trying to control here on the seven, on his second rank. Of course at the moment rook a7 is not possible since his knight on b8 will be hanging since we are attacking it also with our queen. But okay, that's just a position that we could possibly get. Now, going back to the original idea of playing e5, I believe if we play e5 now, looking at all the calculations, we should be able to win material after queen takes g7. The only piece protecting this square is the queen. After we play e5, attacking the queen, the queen has to move away from the protection of this pawn. And then we can simply take it with our queen, and notice that both the rook and knight will be hanging, so we, we should be able to win one of those two pieces. A, a, an example line, for example, will go like this, e5, queen to e7, queen takes g7, queen to f8, trying to protect both pieces. But because this bishop here on c1 is also attacking the knight, we should be able to go queen takes knight or even bishop takes knight and win the piece. So we're just simply going to go for that and win the material. It is probably best for him to go, for our opponent to go knight to f5, just and lose a piece this way. Since we simply capture here, he'll capture a knight. We capture back and he takes at least a pawn for his troubles. Otherwise, he loses a piece and a pawn. But let's see how he decides to respond. So he goes queen to e7. So we're going to go for the line mentioned above. So now the best way to protect against both of these pieces is to go queen of 8 Otherwise, we're simply just going to take here. So notice that... Yeah, he went to rook f8. So I was going to say, if rook to f8, for example, we take here with the bishop, and then there's no way to also protect the rook next, so we will, we will take the rook as well. But okay, he went from queen to f8, and we can simply just take this knight. So we should, from now on, it's just a matter of trading pieces, simplifying the position, and just winning the game. Now, the bishop goes to b7. One of the ideas that he could have here is to sacrifice this pawn just so that his bishop has life. But we're going to prevent that by playing the move to c5. Notice now that this bishop is locked up behind his home pawn chain. And if this a pawn ever gets to a5, his position is going to be absolutely a disaster. So he decides to sacrifice a pawn in order to develop his knight. Notice that his knight wants to go there. Now I'm simply going to capture with this pawn and not with this pawn and not this one. That way the bishop can stay locked in there for a little bit longer. Okay, so so far everything is working according to plan. So I'm gonna go now forward with my plan to put a pawn on a5, making sure this bishop stays on b7 forever. So he allowed that to happen, so let's continue. We already have a winning position. As I mentioned before, all we have to do is trade. So next, he's probably going to put a rook on g8, trying to attack my pawn here. And we're simply just going to play g3, for example. All right, this move is, makes a lot of sense. He just wants to uh, open up the center and, and get some counterplay going there, if you can. So I actually, I actually like that move quite a bit. So we're going to put our king on d2. Uh, I don't I don't have to worry about my king staying in the center since there's no queens and we're actually up a piece. So it's, it is not as bad as it looks. Okay, here we're going to get the opportunity to trade one of the pieces if we wanted to with bishop to f5. But at the moment, I think we're lacking some development, so I am going to develop a piece instead. Now, if any of the rooks come to e8, trying to play e4 and winning a piece, I was going to play bishop f5. But okay, now we have this. And now if a piece comes to e8, we simply do the same thing. We put a rook and attack there. So king to b8 makes sense. He's getting away from the pin now. If bishop f5, he can simply move the knight. So he's no longer in that situation. But it does give us the opportunity to control the e-file ourselves. 
Now, if any rook goes there, we simply play bishop f5. And okay, that move has to be a, a mistake because we're simply going to win this pawn after bishop to g7. And once this pawn goes, the h7 pawn goes. If it takes here on g2, we take his rook. So notice that most of his problems are rely behind the, the fact that his bishop is locked up behind his own punching and cannot get out. Here we're going to take this opportunity and win the exchange since his rook is trapped. We're taking away all the squares. So his best move will be to take here. But all right, now this has to lead to some kind of force, force win. So we're going to give, no, I don't want to give that check just yet. Not just yet. I'm going to try and trap his rook. So not if, if I can get my bishop to g3, this rook would have no squares. So he has to now leave. And when he does leave, which he does to a very, uh, good square actually but attacking both of these pieces and i think i'm forced to play this move but it doesn't matter if we if we trade down it'll be good for us right now we're up a full rook so i'm not too concerned if he decides to trade rooks so i can get away with moves like this which might not essentially be the best now we do have to worry a little bit about the time situation notice that it's 244 for us, my opponent has a full six minutes, but it's plenty of time for us to convert this into a win, for sure. Okay, the knight went back to f8 to protect this pawn, but bishops do a very good job at uh, blocking the squares from the knight. So this knight is actually now trapped essentially on f8. So next we can simply go bishop to e7 and win it. But okay, he goes bishop there, and this gives us the opportunity to trade yet another piece. And now we're just going to invade with rook to e7. And it should be game over. Not to mention that rook to e8 is winning the, the knight outright. So, and again, notice how this bishop controls the squares that this knight can, that this knight can go to. So it does a very good job here on this square. Uh, and this pawn and rook pre prepare the knight from going there. So I'm just simply going to go h4, h5. And then I will have to move away. So he's decided to sacrifice his pawn instead. So that he can, see, he can get some play here. But I'm not to worry about any checks either. So I'm just going to invade. Let him check and take this pawn. It does not concern us too much. We're simply going to go rook here, check, and take all his queenside pawns, and then these pawns will eventually queen and win the game. We can also go for this and get a queen right away, actually. So I think this might be a bit faster. So I'm not going to concern myself with taking the pawns. I'm just going to go for the kill right away. Okay, and this... This should lead to checkmate in a few moves. All right. So good game by our opponent. Let's take a quick look at the analysis to see if we could have improved anywhere. Which is always the goal when we play chess to get better. Okay, so Great. It was a great game play by us. The computer is saying that it was smooth, that I had the advantage from start to finish, and I do agree with it since my opponent, his first three moves were very, very, um, how, how can you say, I mean, just a complete disaster, putting his, locking up, locking up his bishop behind his own punching. And he didn't play too badly, actually, towards the end. He had an accuracy of 76.1. It's just that his position was so bad. It was tough to play. And uh, again, we made no inaccuracies, no mistakes, no blunders, and we didn't miss any wins. We, we actually played quite well. So let's just uh, take a quick look at the full analysis to see uh, some, some of the lines that could have happened again. From here, 
the best move is to go d5 and go for a standard French. And my suggestion to play against the French is to actually uh, play the, the advanced variation of the French. But a lot of players find success in playing the mainline French with knight to c3. And from here, you have to like learn a lot of the uh, theory and a lot of different moves. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like this knight c3 line. You have to learn what to do against knight to f6. You have to learn what to do against bishop b4. You have to learn how to do like, uh, what to do against pawn takes pawn and what to do against pawn to c5. So I save myself a lot of trouble. Uh, and that's the reason why I like to play e5, and that way I only have to know one opening. So, okay, my opponent instead decided to go for the move to c6. And we continued by putting another pawn in the center. And again, uh, his idea here should have been to put the pawn on d5, but I was simply going to go pawn here. And if it took, we simply take with our bishop. And notice that our two pawns in the center are better than his two pawns here. And again, his bishop is stuck on c8. So we're doing quite well, if this were to happen anyway. But instead, he made yet another committal move, and he played a6, which further locks his bishop on c8. And as you probably saw in the game, it was one of the main issues that he had. Okay, I continue with development. He played bishop before, which was a, a normal move, but it did... Uh, uh, put the square that was protecting now for me to attack. And as you can see, I made the best move, which was to go for that square. Uh, my opponent took on c3, which was an inaccuracy. There was, uh, he, he was not forced to take there. He should have protected his pawn with either g6, as the computer is suggesting, or king to f8, which is another idea uh, in the French defense, to go king to f8 and then castle by hand by playing uh, g6, king g7, knight to f6, and rook to e8, which is another way to go. But instead, he took here, which is a small inaccuracy, and then played queen f6, which is another inaccuracy. And the inaccuracy doesn't come right away. It comes in the fact that I could develop my pieces and later target the queen. Notice that although my queen is out early, it's a lot more difficult for him to attack it, since his pieces on the queen side are locked up and can attack me, while my pieces here on my queen side could eventually do have some potential attack, and it did in the game. So here I continue with bishop to d3, and uh, I had the threat to go e5. He goes knight h6, and we simply went to g3, uh, keeping the idea to play e5 on our next move. Here he blunders with b5, because now he loses a, a full piece, after after the move to e5 and the computer is already giving me a huge advantage of plus seven which is more than uh, a whole two pieces advantage and this makes sense because just looking at these three pieces here they cannot move so that already gives me an advantage of plus three alone probably and we're about to win this knight as well as we did in the game so after queen to e7 we took queen to f8 and we ended up taking the piece and from this moment on I don't think we need to uh, evaluate any longer. So this game was a pretty easy win from start to finish. So let's get a new game in. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So let's see what we got here. We are playing against Servizio from Italy with the black pieces. And our opponent is rated 1,043. So already we're getting some very... Uh, well, not very, but stronger opponents from our previous encounters. Since we started quite low at the 400 level. Okay, so my opponent has decided to play against the Sicilian, a close setup with knight to c3. And usually here, they're going to continue with f4, bishop c4, knight to f3, castle. And attack me here on the king side with uh, the pawn uh, majority. Okay, but here we're just going to continue to develop normally with knight to c6. Making sure that he doesn't get d4 as easy as in other situations. But he's playing the closest salient, so I, he should play here bishop to b5 or bishop to c4. And then play the move d3. If he plays d3 now, this bishop stays uh, be locked up behind the pawn chain. As, and as we've seen in previous games, that's usually not a very good idea. Okay, so he's burning quite a little bit of clock, 
which is unusual considering it's only the third move. And I'm pretty sure this is not the first time he sees this uh, C5, since the Sicilian is by far this. I mean, after E4, you have E5, which is probably the most common, and then C5 is the second most common. Okay, here, so he's attacking our bishop. So here I'm going to play knight to d4. And the idea is that I want to take, uh, I want to take here. And although it's going to be a close position, and I probably do prefer my knights, I have ideas of opening up later in the game. And having the bishop pair should give me uh, a, a nice, a nice edge for sure. So let's see how my opponent continues. If I'm not, if I remember correctly, I think I had to play a four. Uh, knight takes, knight takes, and I got some d5. And he takes, and notice that I cannot take because of the check. So it, it, become, it becomes quite sharp. But I do get to open the position, and I am up. And not up, but I do have the bishop pair. So let's see what he decides to do here. He always doesn't know the, this position at all, because he, he is thinking quite a bit. Otherwise, he would have uh, lashed out already with either f4 or knight to f3, or even moved this bishop out of the way, which makes some sense. He could go bishop c4, but that would be good for us since we then we get a move uh, and we win a tempo. So let's see, let's see what he comes up with. I I quite like the fact that he's going to be in some serious time uh, trouble. Since it's move four and he's already burned two and a half minutes. So yeah, and here, for example, one of the ideas that I want to also play is g6, bishop g7. Put my knight on f6. In some situations, I can even go e6 and put my knight here and knight here, and solidify my knight on this square. <coughs> okay, excuse me. So this queen move. It's quite interesting. He he's putting a lot of pressure on sorry on this square, but at the moment that square is protected by one, two, three pieces. So I'm not exactly sure how he plans to get there. I'm playing his queen to g4, which is moving out the queen out too early, and you should never do this out in the opening. Now look at the square on c2, which is attacked by my knight no longer protected by the queen which is doing a great job at protecting that square so you should not you should not move you should not move the queen out too early especially when my knight's getting very close to your position so we're just simply going to take the material there's no reason why not to so already we have a winning advantage since we couldn't freely take this rook and if he allows me to bring my knight out, then we're going to be up a full rook. So here, I believe probably bishop to d3, or queen to d1, or queen to e2 are probably the best moves to keep my knight trapped on a1. And again, the queen to g4 had no targets. g7 is protected, d7 is protected. So what was the idea behind queen g4? Okay, so... I don't see what my opponent is uh, trying to accomplish with bishop c4. Now he's putting pressure here, and he might go for some kind of kind of scholar's mate, but it's not going to work. If queen to h5, we're simply going to play e6. Okay, he he keeps making random moves, so uh, let's just punish him. Next, we're gonna go uh, pawn to e6, knight to f6. Or even knight to f6 directly, kicking the queen out. Even some d6 attacking the queen with our bishop could be quite annoying since he might completely miss the fact that we are attacking his queen. So let's go for that. It's a discover attack on the queen, so he has to move it somewhere. So obviously knight takes, we take the queen, so that, that, that doesn't work. And if he does move the queen, uh, well, he decided to take here. And it's a very interesting move. There could be some knight to g5 uh, checkmating ideas 
but I don't think they work. We simply put our king back and we, we, we should be able to cover all the checks quite well. So it just seems to me like it's a free piece for for not a lot of uh, material gain. Like I said, any checks we, we can just simply cover. So knight g5 now doesn't bother me too much. I can simply hide on e8. Okay, so he plays he plays this move and we can, there's a lot of ways to continue here. We can take, he's gonna take with check, but we simply go to e8 again and I don't see anything wrong. So, all these sacrifices could probably work if he had access to his rooks and his c1 bishop, but like this, there's no chance. Okay, here we can simply now take the knight, and we're going to follow this up by playing e6 and bring our bishop out and put our rook on e8 or f8 and castle by hand with our king. And we should have a pretty good game. But before I do that, I'm considering some bishop check first. And let's go for that, just to develop a piece, since we're giving a check with it. And then play e6, instead of having my bishop locked behind my pawn. Now, in some situations, there's a, a lot of checkmate ideas. For example, queen to d3 right now is going to ask him some very serious questions. How does he intend to prevent the checkmate from f1? So, I don't see any reason why not to go for this. He has to block either with queen to e2 or knight to e2 or even queen to e1. But queen to e1 runs into queen takes f3 and then it's really game over since it will be impossible to stop this checkmate here. And he goes for that. And now protecting against this is quite impossible. I mean, not impossible. He can go queen f, uh, f1, but we simply take. King takes and we take the rook, so it should be pretty pretty much over. And I am pretty sure this game is not going to need a lot of analysis since we want a full rook uh, on move 5, I think. So yeah, uh, he has to play this move or this move. Both lead to a, a loss of a queen. So it is not, it is not going to be too complicated. And... Preventing the checkmate is almost, uh, even if we take the queen, it's probably going to lead to checkmate regardless. Okay, so he goes for this one instead. Now checkmate is still threatened, so he has to take the bishop. And now we're just going to collect the material. So our opponent decided to uh, resign, which is, honestly speaking, the right approach. There was, he had no chances going forward in that game. So let's see what the analysis says. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a quick one. Okay, so all normal stuff up to here. And like I said, this queen g4 is, was just an absolute blunder right from the start. And the computer said I missed the win. I'm very... Uh, I'm very excited to see what that was actually now that we're here. So, okay, queen g4 with, with no threats. You should have gone here for, for like I said, some, some f4, for example, uh, trying to develop your pieces with knight to f3. Uh, maybe even here, bishop to c4 should have been considered. And actually, the computer prefers this move as the best move in the position. I'm trying not to give me the knight for the bishop. But okay, our opponent plays uh, queen to g4, and we simply just took a rook. And and then he made some very questionable moves, like bishop to c4. Uh, as I said, the computer the computer gives the, the line to go back to d1 and prevent my knight from coming out. And then play b3, bishop b2, and take my knight. But instead he goes for this and allows me to just win a full rook, because now my knight can get out. So bishop to d5, another move that makes absolutely no sense. Uh, my opponent has played bishop b5, c4, now to d5 with zero, zero threats. So okay, we play knight to e5, bringing, getting our knight back. And in some situations, it can, it can even uh, return to c6 or e6 and, and protect our king. But okay, we're, this from now on, this, uh, 
this game is pretty over. Okay, so here, yeah, I played d6, uh, and I didn't think it was the best move. I just wanted to give the this cover attack on the queen as we did in the game. But I do agree that e6 uh, was probably a better a better idea, considering that we're upper rook anyway. Why why get into all this mess? That could have potentially worked, but okay, I wasn't too worried about it. We took an f7. He gave a check. We covered the check. He went to e5. We simply took. We're playing the best moves uh, at the moment. I, I took an f3, and okay, the computer saying that queen d3 was better, but this this is the same. It's the same idea. It's the same uh, position anyway after queen to d3, and I'm still waiting for my missed win. So he goes queen obviously there, which is a mistake. We take. Ah, okay, I see, I see. Okay, so we took queen f3, but obviously queen to g6 is checkmate. So that's why the computer said that uh, I missed the win, which, okay, makes a lot of sense. I did miss a win there. But queen takes f3 doesn't spoil anything considering uh, we're taking the queen anyway. So, and the same, the same thing here, we don't have to take the queen. Uh, the, taking the queen is a, is a mistake. We simply go queen g4. He has to go there, and we take again. We check me. So uh, two wins, I guess I missed. Uh, but okay. At this point, I was in thinking, so it makes sense that I missed this easy tactics. Okay, so that concludes our two games for today. I guess the uh, takeaway from from today's two games is that not to bring your queen out too early. Uh, it most of the time it will lead to disaster. Although in game one I did bring my queen out, uh, I did explain the reasons why, and that it was it was very my opponent didn't have a lot of targets. So uh, usually in those cases you can get away with it. So yeah, that concludes it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the games and were able to learn from them. And if you like the video, hit the like button and leave a comment down below. And as always, stay safe, have a great day, and show respect to your opponent. See you next time.